Hi everyone, welcome to Active Directory Solution Center. My name is Sai. I'm a subject matter expert in identity management or Microsoft Directory Services. My day job is I'm into infrastructure enterprise consulting, focusing on Microsoft infrastructure services stack. Uh, it's going on for 13 plus years, focusing on migrations, implementations, consolidations, divestments, and, and, and different uh, projects. Today we will look at the common Active Directory consolidation question most customer has. It's like, I, I want to consolidate my sites into fewer sites. Uh, can I do it? What are the implications? Uh, how this can be done? Um, well, yes, the question is, the answer, the short answer is yes, we can consolidate sites into fewer sites, but there are lots and loads of analysis work that needs to be performed on the site which 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 is targeted for consolidation in the in the in the in an example we're going to consider a a site a and site b uh, site a being the primary site or a data center site and site b being a, a brand site or is it or the um, child site um, so customer wants to migrate or customer wants to consolidate the domain controllers in the site B to site A. So this is the activity and customer has this question like uh, how easy is that and do I need to really bother about my uh, domain controllers and why can't I simply move my domain controllers back into the site A which is my primary data center. Um, the answer is no. You, you, you're not supposed to do it without analyzing site B performance impacts. So when, when we start up the project, so a few of the, f there are a few considerations that, that needs to be taken care of. So a few analysis work needs to be panned out and needs to be followed. So such as uh, what are the implications to my application stack? What, what are the implications to my network? I mean, how good is my network to support the uh, brand side to the parent side consolidation? How many number of users? What is the amount of users? What is the client affinity and that, that the site B has? And what, what is the workload on the domain controllers at this point of time? So you need to understand the performance impacts um, in, in, in a larger larger state. So it's 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 the performance and the hard coding. So um, and and what else? How do I stage domain controllers? So you migrate the DCs from site A to site B uh, to the primary data center. So you don't have or do you need to really go ahead and order the new hardware or can I use the existing virtualization tier? So that's that's another uh, uh, another question which customer. Uh, should understand like can I put put the DCs back into the physical server or is this the right time to virtualize domain controllers? What is the security model? Well, how secure is this transition or the consolidation is all about? So uh, what's the what's the secure channel between the site A and the site B? It's it's not the domain controller secure channel I'm referring here. I'm talking about um, if there are any critical apps and if they need to send an LDAP, so do I have a substantial uh, security layer uh, established between site B and site A? Uh, what, are, what are my operational costs? So um, how, how how well I need to expand my organization units in the actual directory? So uh, how many number of guys I need to staff into the primary data center to take care of these servers, the physical service, or maybe virtual service, maybe in this case. So um, what is the monitoring effort? So do I have an existing monitor uh, utility or monitoring tool with the server calls and, and, and will they support these migrations or these consolidations? So these doesn't look really complex, but the, they are different scenarios or different steps which needs to be taken care. So I'll be cons uh, I'll be covering them uh, one uh, one by one in in, in a phase wise. Uh, so the first one would be the application stack. So this is an activity which needs customers to understand. Do we have in homegrown apps which are hard coded to these domain controller uh, names and the IP addresses? Um, 
check mark yes or no if it is yes and you have to go back to your developers and say hey developer please change or you have to uh, change the hard coded DC name to whatever it may be or if, if you're doing a pure consolidation like you don't want these domain controllers back into the data center you just need to rely on the existing DCs uh, so the equation changes for application so you need to ensure uh, you put across the new domain name, domain controller names and remove the old uh, hard-coded DC names but if you say you're going to just move these DCs from site B to site A uh, still remains the name would st still remains the same but I wouldn't I would bet that the IP address would definitely change in the primary data centers with, with, with what I see with different migrations happen so a customer doesn't really keep the same IP address range in the sides um, in the, in the in of the brand side to be in the brand side so uh, these are the few of the considerations so if you change the domain controller name do my app does my app has an intelligent way of querying the uh, the remote domain controller so we may not know so what sort of an application they have coded so uh, these are the some of the analysis work that you need to perform on the application layer and what is the performance so when the user logs on he, he enters his username and the password what is the amount what is the time required for a successful log on uh, to his application so uh, so for example a user might be taking five minutes before and now he takes like 10 minutes so that's that's really not acceptable so if so you have to draw an acceptable range and convince um, the developers or maybe the users the end user saying like well you're going to see a minute delay uh, now the reason is like you move the domain controllers is that is that acceptable so these these things you have to understand so and the network so when I say the network, so how network is really, really relative to the client affinities. Client affinity is the the amount of time the client logs on to the Windows operating system and queries the domain controller and logs on successfully. So if the profiles have roaming profiles and it's loaded with the logon scripts or we don't know so it depends on the scenario uh, and you need to evaluate mm, the performance of the uh, client operating systems so we have different tools Microsoft have different tools to perform this functionalities like we, we run WPR uh, Windows performance recorder and and analyze uh, the logon performance boot performance in different performance uh, of the operating systems um, and then if if you are if you're happy with these questions and if you say well I mean all these things are being covered and this is the right time I'm going to move my uh, domain controllers but still there are tons of activities that needs to be done how and how does my DNS really comes into play so how do I need to design my DNS now because my clients are getting pointed to or my apps are getting pointed to the DNS so you need to understand scripts apps clients need to be rebind to the uh, new DNS or existing DNS so, and, uh, and the DNS names may be same but the IP addresses change or you may have like a new DNS server names and new IP addresses coming in so you need to understand what is the challenge of moving or consolidation of this domain controller so at back at the data center so once you have decided well I'm, I'm gonna move this but you have to take a chance or you have to take uh, a, a, a choice between the physical domain controllers versus the virtual domain controller so the 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 with the with the introduction of virtualization like VMware we have hypervisor and in and different vendors have started uh, their own virtualization stack layers um, you need to understand whether you can stage the domain controllers on the physical server or you have to go with the virtual uh, infrastructure in place and you need to understand what's the security what is the group policy what is do I need to lock down my domain controllers or do we need to lock down the users and what is the capacity planning for that so it's overall capacity planning you need to an an analyze and understand so 
what's my operation so do I need to en enable a specific uh, a separate SCOM uh, server to monitor my domain controllers or do I do I have an existing monitor monitoring tool which uh, which adds up to this capability and starts monitoring my domain controller so these are a few of the things in and uh, and uh, implementation you need to understand you need to run the tools again you need to run the performance tools again to analyze and understand the impact of the uh, domain controller uh, migration and the movement um, I hope these are the few uh, sections of a few of the few critical things that needs to be evaluated for migrations or consolidations I hope this is really useful and I'm going to come back with more series uh, have a good day ahead cheese